May I have your attention? Today's celebration will begin in 10 minutes. We ask that you please be seated, turn off your cell phones, and please do not move into the aisles to take photographs during the ceremony. Professional photographers will be photographing each graduate as they receive their diploma. Please keep the aisles clear before and after the ceremony for graduates to enter and exit the arena. Thank you. Mount St. Joseph University is photographing and or recording this event. By attending, you understand and agree that the university may use video, audio, photographs, or other recording of you from this event for advertising, trade, or other business uses in any medium, technology known or later developed. By attending, you release the university, its owners, affiliates, officers, directors, employees, agents, subcontractors, and any other authorized person or entity from any claim arising from use of any video, audio, photograph, or other recording. The ceremony will begin shortly. Thank you.
Good afternoon. Welcome. I am Janet Cox, Dean of Students, and it is my pleasure to announce the 111th commencement of Mount St. Joseph University will now begin. During the year, I have the great opportunity to lead a team of individuals and offices who plan commencement ceremonies for our graduating students each May and December. We are so happy to welcome you all to celebrate your graduation and academic achievements. I'd also like to thank our band ensemble and vocalist, our marshals and readers, and all of our volunteers and university staff for being here today and for preparing our campus so beautifully for this very special event. Following the ceremony and benediction, guests, we ask that you please remain in your seats until after the graduates leave the building, leave the gym. You may then exit through the main Harrington doors where you entered and meet your graduates on the driveway uh, where you can take photos in the quad or photos in front of our uh, mountain lion statue in front of the field house. Right now, the weather is looking great. We will make announcements as necessary if we have to change that plan, but I think Sister Barbara has been praying for us and she's done a very good job. <laughs> so, yay, Sister Barbara. What will happen at the end? is the stage party leaves the building, and then our faculty and staff, and then our students. And so once the last student is let out by the marshals, that's when you all can leave. I will ask that the volunteers please clear the aisles and entranceways. The audience may remain seated for the procession. Thank you.
please be seated? Good afternoon and welcome. I am Dr. Curry, Acting Provost and Master of Ceremonies for Commencement. This graduating class is part of a long tradition we have established at Mount St. Joseph University. So it is indeed an honor to welcome our graduates, members of their families and friends to the 111th Mount St. Joseph University Commencement. I would like to thank many individuals here today who have contributed to the achievement of these graduates. The family and friends of our graduates have played a vital role in supporting and encouraging the graduates to reach their educational goals. We want you to know that we appreciate you. Will the family and friends of our graduates please stand to be recognized? To the members of the stage party and other special guests, I'm pleased you are here to celebrate this occasion. I would like to introduce members of the staff and board of trustees and thank you for your leadership. Dr. H. James Williams, University President. <clears throat> Mr. Jeff Birding, speaker and honorary degree recipient. Garrett Bascom, Class of 2017, representing the Alumni Association. <laughs> Sister Karen Elliott, Chief Mission Officer. <laughs> Janet Cox, Dean of Students. <laughs> Kathy McMullen, Chairperson, Board of Trustees. <laughs> Sister Annette Muckerhide, Board of Trustees. Harold Brown, Board of Trustees. Jonathan Hiltz, Board of Trustees. Dr. Ann Saluk, Board of Trustees. And Jenny Taylor, Registrar. In addition, I want to thank the members of our President's Cabinet. Paige Ellerman, Vice President, Compliance, Risk, and Legal Affairs. <laughs> Jeff Briggs, Chief Financial Officer. <laughs> Sydney Prohaska, Vice President of Institutional Advancement. <laughs> Jeff Wappler, Vice President of Marketing. <laughs> and Chris Powers, Vice President of Enrollment. These dedicated professionals have demonstrated extraordinary leadership as we make decisions to move Mount St. Joseph University into the future. It is also a pleasure to have with us today Garrett Bascom, Class of 2017, representing the Alumni Advisory Council. Please join me in thanking Garrett and all of our alumni for their support of MSJ and all of our graduates. The next group I would like to recognize is a very special group. These individuals make Mount St. Joseph University graduates the very best. Their dedication is the key to the success of each graduate. I am, of course, referring to the Mount faculty and staff. Would the Mount faculty and staff please rise to be recognized? Commencement is always a memorable event for our graduates. You have worked so hard for so long, and for a few hours on this important day, you don your caps and gowns and celebrate your achievements. During your years at the Mount, you have learned not only business or nursing, chemistry or philosophy, or how to teach a child to read. You have learned to persevere, how to hang in there and keep learning, how to keep writing those papers, studying for those exams, while helping your family and friends cope with challenges. Today, 
you are heroes. And you are made of heart and soul and love and grit. We are fortunate to have known you and look forward to sharing your journey as you become teachers and nurses, social workers, communication specialists, leaders and organizers, spouses and parents, and always and forever, Mount alums. I would like to invite Sister Karen Elliott to the podium to provide our invocation. Gentlemen, please remove your caps. I'd ask you to please close your eyes and become aware of the, dispar the spark of the divine, the spark of the sacred within you. As you are created in the divine image and likeness of God. Good and gracious God, El Shaddai, Elohim, Adonai, Jehovah, Allah, Lord Shiva, Lakshmi, Great Spirit, Higher Power, and all of the sacred and holy names by which you are known. We invoke you this day to be with us and to especially be present with our graduates as we celebrate their accomplishments and pray for their success in their chosen professions. While we celebrate our graduates, we recognize that they did not attain the achievements of this day alone. And we ask you to graciously and abundantly bless their parents, spouses, children, grandparents, aunts and uncles, and dear friends who encouraged, challenged, and assisted them in ways too numerous to count. We pray that you will be with our graduates to lift them up and to light their way, and to grace them with the courage to continue to live with the heart of a lion. Grace our graduates and all of us so that we will work for the common good as we dare to risk a caring response to our world in need. We ask you, Divine Presence, to fill our graduates with the confidence to live the Seton family motto, to hazard yet forward into their chosen professions. Amen. Please stand and remain standing for the national anthem sung by student Joel Williams music education major who is graduating today. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet It is my pleasure to invite Dr. H. James Williams, President of Mount St. Joseph University, to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Curry, and thank all of you. I'm James Williams, 
the seventh president here at Mount St. Joseph University. We appreciate your joining us for this celebration of excellence and achievement. It is now my pleasure to formally introduce Dr. Birding, our commencement speaker. Jeff Birding is the co-CEO of FC Cincinnati, and he also serves as president of the FCC Enterprise, the professional soccer team he co-founded in the summer of 2015. With this arrival in Major League Soccer for the 2019 season, less than four years after its founding, FC Cincinnati became the benchmark for organic growth and community-driven sports interest. Now in its fourth year in Major League Soccer, the club is focused on growing its place in the greater Cincinnati region in its new home, a world-class, privately funded, $250 million TQL stadium in the West End neighborhood next to Over the Rhine. Prior to his August 2015 founding of FC Cincinnati, Birding served for more than 19 years as an executive with the Cincinnati Bengals, where he led sales and public affairs efforts for the city's NFL franchise. The hugely successful launch of FC Cincinnati is consistent with Birding's track record of working to make his hometown a better place to live, work, and raise a family. Jeff is president of the FCC Foundation, chairman for Visit Cincinnati, vice chair for the Cincinnati Regional Business Committee. He has volunteered with the Chamber of Commerce for over 20 years and has added years of committed service to the Cincinnati City Council. He has been awarded numerous civic awards, including a spot among the top 100 leaders in the history of our local United Way. He's been recognized in the 2006 edition 40 Under 40 from the Cincinnati Business Courier. He was featured at the 2018 Hispanic Chamber of Cincinnati USA's annual gala and was awarded the 2019 Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year. Birding is a fifth generation Cincinnatian, born and raised in Westwood where he attended St. Xavier High School. He graduated cum laude from Miami University and earned a master's degree in business administration with honors from Xavier in 1999. He has three children, Allie, Jack, and Grace. With his wife, Lindsay, the family resides in the city's Mount Lookout neighborhood. Now, during this morning's graduation ceremony, the university bestowed on Dr. Birding the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters which allows us to refer to him as doctor on our campus. It is my pleasure now to present Dr. Jeff Birding, our commencement speaker. President Williams, thank you for the very generous introduction. I'm joined by my wife, Lindsay, and it is our honor and privilege to share this momentous occasion. Students, you sit today with a mastery of your subject and hopefully some lifelong friendships, all of which have been made stronger in surmounting the challenges of a global pandemic. We returned last night from two college graduations at Loyola University, Chicago for my son and my younger daughter. Sitting in the audience as a father, I was reminded of your parents' sacrifice and their pride in and hopes for you. I wanna ask the new graduates, think for a moment about all of the people that helped you get here today. They may be with you, they may no longer be with you. We rarely succeed in life alone. So graduates, please join me in a salute and a round of applause for those people, including your faculty and staff, who have helped you make today a reality. As was noted by the president, I grew up not far from here on the west side one of 10 kids in a large Catholic family. 
I went to St. Catherine's grade school where teachers and coaches who saw something in me that I never saw, they encouraged me to go to St. Xavier High School. My dad said if I passed the exam, the entrance exam, we'd figure out the tuition, and we did. Then the Jesuits and the teachers at St. Xavier took over, imparting that foundational message of men for others. And the seeds of my calling, my purpose, were planted. Like some of you, I was the first in my birding family to graduate from college. For me, that meant plowing snow and digging ditches on breaks and working jobs on campus during semesters. It was harder to take classes while working. I didn't go to spring break beaches or on wiener ski trips like many did. Rather, I worked that construction job. But I didn't see hard work as a negative because I was getting one step closer to where I wanted to be. Fast forward to 2015. Carl Lindner, maybe the top business leader in Cincinnati, we were up in New York City, to pitch this idea of a new professional franchise in Cincinnati to league officials at MLS. The meeting went very well. In fact, it was clear that the opportunity was ours for the taking. Carl and I went to dinner that night we discussed how, to make this effort successful, we needed to assemble a leadership team to stoke the fire in the community around this new sports franchise. Carl said he and his family would make the investment to achieve the plan. However, before they would commit, he said, to make this happen, he needed my answer to a very simple question. Jeff, he asked. Are you all in? He said they would only be in, the Lindners, if I was all in. He reminded me it was my idea, my business plan, that I had the professional sports and political and civic experience that had placed me in this moment. To make FCC a reality, he said, I would have to leave the Bengals and jump in with both feet to lead this new soccer venture. It wasn't a slam dunk. But my inspiration had been that I wanted my kids to have a hometown team of their sport the same way I had grown up loving the Big Red Machine. I had written the business plan to help create the team. I didn't think I was going to be the one tapped to run the team. It was a life-defining moment. Was I ready? In short, was I all in? I answered yes. Carl pulled the trigger on the funding, and the rest is history. FC Cincinnati was born, and now I'm blessed to be the club's president and co-CEO. And so graduates, that's my challenge to all of you today, to be all in. So you may ask, what does it mean to be all in? It means rejecting statements like, well, we'll never get that done, or I don't have time, or let someone else do it. I ran the Flying Pig Marathon last Sunday to prove this all-in point, that nothing is impossible. That with focus on the goal, the discipline of putting the work in, with the perseverance that doesn't allow quitting when it gets real hard, the sacrifice because the goal is too important to fail, we can achieve things, big things, that others say are impossible. I started training one mile worked my way up from there. On Sunday, we had these treacherous storms, monsooning rains, and yet my mind and body knew to just keep running one step at a time. Keep going forward. Hours later, yeah, many, many hours later, after 26.2 miles, crossing the finish line and getting that marathon medal nearly brought tears of joy. I'm not blessed with these amazing athletic skills like a lot of people that I work with. I'm not a natural born runner. But I do have the ability, I would offer all of us have the ability, to put the work in into achieving big goals. I have the ability to be all in. Being all means leaning in, embracing life challenges, 
and sometimes having the courage to create your own challenges. And all in means not just thinking about today or 2023, but 2033 and beyond. We need to answer the question, what future are we creating for ourselves and our loved ones? To me, the plan starts with purpose. You're here for a reason. And the most important thing you can do in life is to find, live, and share your purpose. It's the one thing in life that truly matters. President Kennedy famously visited NASA for the first time in 1962. And coming upon a staff member who was carrying a broom, he asked, sir, what's your role here? To which the man beamed and he proudly replied, Mr. President, I'm putting a man on the moon. He was all in. He was all in on that purpose. I've recruited staff to FC Cincinnati with the invitation of building something bigger than ourselves, of creating a legacy of having founded a professional sports franchise that maybe 50 years from now will be the biggest sports team in the region, where you can tell your kids and your grandchildren, I helped build that club. FC Cincinnati exists because of me. You may not know your purpose yet, so I encourage you then to set about following your passion. It so often leads to your purpose. The important thing is to make it your life mission, to find it, to live it, and to share it. To help find your passion, seek out jobs and experiences that allow you to use your strengths, your God-given gifts. Do what energizes you. Because doing what you love enables you to find meaning. Doing whatever it takes to make your dreams a reality. Your current or first post-college job may not be your ultimate purpose, but it can serve as a vehicle to live and share the purpose. I promise you, when I was digging dishes, I was fulfilling my dream of being the first in my family to graduate from college. I didn't love the work. I did find meaning in it. And I valued the blue-collar labor as a reminder of how blessed I was to have the opportunity to earn a college degree. That connectivity to my purpose made me all in to be the best I could be. I'm confident that all of you have had similar experiences to get here today. And speaking of hard work, one thing you will find hard in life is pivoting, recognizing when you need to make a course correction. When I was your age, there was a popular song uh, titled, Every Day is a Winding Road. If you're like most people, you won't work the same job or profession throughout your career. In fact, statistics show that most people will change their jobs or careers 12 times in your lifetime. Has your college education prepared you for this? Has it prepared you to be all in on the winding road? If you're feeling pretty good with that query, I believe you'll know these three values. Number one, the learning process you have navigated to graduation today isn't the end. It's a beginning. Learn from every job and experience, because each job, good or bad, prepares you for the work of your life's purpose. I love the teachings of the author John Gordon and highly recommend him. We use him a lot at FC Cincinnati. He writes in his book, The Seed, that, quote, the quest for your purpose is not a straight line. It's filled with mystery, signs, obstacles, victories, dead ends, delays, and detours. There will be fear. There will be frustration and loss. Your job is to stay optimistic and faithful on your quest. To stay ahead, you'll need to commit yourself to lifelong learning. Ted Lasso, you know, football guy, finds himself in soccer. I watch it. Ted Lasso, in a favorite episode, instructed patrons in a bar to be curious, he says. Be curious. To change and adapt, you must intensely be curious about the world, its changing conditions, and your place in it. I believe we're either growing or dying, very simply. If you aren't learning, and I don't mean the formal classroom or the training you're going to get at work, if you're not learning, you're going to stagnate, and others are going to pass you by and your dreams may die. So grow your faith, right? Grow your intellect, grow your relationships, 
and commit each day to being one step further, one step closer to the best version of yourself. To not stagnate, you're going to have to be a sponge, read everything you can, talk to as many people as you can, volunteer to take on tasks beyond your comfort zone. I tell my staff, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Go run into the room with people who are much smarter, who you can learn from. Lifetime learning means also moving forward, but with the wisdom that sometimes you have to take a side street to get there. About that side street, the second thing to remember in preparing to adapt to changing jobs or careers a dozen times is to build a network of relationships. Build your team, right? Build your team. John Gordon writes in his book, The Energy Bus, which by the way, I made every single person in our organization has to read this book. He writes, you are the driver of your bus. You're not just a feather in the wind floating through life. No, you're the driver of your bus. You get to decide who's on your bus. You invite people on. Sometimes you put the bus in stop and ask people to get off your bus, right? Look around your life from time to time and take measure. If you don't have a strong enough team to reach your goals, set about to meet new people who can help you get to your destination, your ultimate destination, who you want on your bus and invite them on. Build a network of supportive people that can satisfy the curiosity I talked about, learning from people who are different. Meet people where they are too. Don't expect them to meet you where you are. And don't forget those on the margins. They may become your most important backers. You, we face real opposition to building a stadium in the West End. So I decided to go door to door in the West End, where we were gonna, near where we were gonna build our stadium, to listen to the neighbors. I heard of their fear, I learned of their distrust, and I was inspired by their hopes. We negotiated, signed, and we've exceeded, exceeded a historic community benefits agreement and now the residents of the West End are FC Cincinnati's strongest allies. Your team should help you with self-awareness, build your self-awareness and grit. Being on a team also helps us through adversity. Remember, it's easy to win alone. It's really hard to lose alone. We're all going to face adversity in life. To have a team of people around you to help you overcome adversity is what makes life manageable, can give us comfort to share the love with us. I assure you, I thank God for my team that stood by me during three years of an MLS expansion franchise. We had a lot of losses. So thank God for my team. Okay, so this brings me to my final element of preparing for the winding road. If you don't remember much else about this all-in message, remember these two words, embrace change. Embrace change. It's a cliche to say it, right? Change is the only constant. But cliches stick because there's truth in them. And the truth here is that change isn't a threat. It's an opportunity. Change, while making life more interesting, also makes life more difficult. Think of what's to come in your careers, right? New bosses, new skills, new processes. Change. Change. So be open to new opportunities since your dream job may not be the one that you've dreamed about. I was a political science diplomacy major at Miami University. Thought maybe someday I'd be a US senator or a US ambassador. Somehow God opened a door for me by inspiring me to found and run a major league soccer franchise here in my hometown. I wanted to change the world and ended up doing so through soccer right here in Cincinnati. Because I believe our sports teams have an obligation, not an opportunity, an obligation to lead, inspire, and unite. I changed course, and I hope I'm a model for how often we end up with amazing careers that may have nothing to do with what we studied or what our childhood dreams are, if we go all in with the willingness to embrace change. So with all this change, I hope there's one constant for each of you. I want to encourage you that whatever job you take after Gratian beyond on your journey, 
that you will decide to serve others. Scripture teaches us to whom much is given, much is expected. You now have a college degree. When you serve in small ways, you'll find opportunities to serve in big ways. Before I end, two quick notes of caution. Number one, don't rush the future. You may want things to happen now, but more than likely, if you got what you wanted now, you wouldn't be ready for it. John Gordon writes that, quote, the purpose process prepares you, strengthens you, shapes you, and grows you to be successful, not in your time, but at the right time. Just be ready. Two, don't compare yourself to others, please. Don't compare. We don't know what burdens others are carrying. We're only in charge of our journey, of our own place in the world. We have a culture DNA code at FC Cincinnati, and one value is own your stuff. Just yours, no one else's. I started today talking about purpose and identifying where your talents and efforts fit with this larger calling. It doesn't have to be putting a man on the moon, but it should be something that makes your hard work tie to your larger purpose for yourself, your family, and the world. And I'm here today to say, for your hopes and dreams in life, you have to be all in. Truly, you do yourself a disservice if you're not all in. Your university's mission, its purpose, is to light the way. And lighting the way means lifelong learning, relationship building, and embracing change. And this doesn't end today with graduation, it begins. So remember yesterday and all that Mount St. Joseph has taught you. Remember today and your commitment to being all in. And most importantly, think about tomorrow and all that you can do. And let what you've learned here guide you in the years ahead. Let it inspire you to live a life with humility, charity, and love. And let it spark the match, fan the flame, and light, light the way. Congratulations, class of 2023. Light the way. The world awaits and needs you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We wish to thank Dr. Birding for being a part of our commencement ceremonies and inspiring so many through his leadership and work across our city. He has made a huge difference in the greater Cincinnati area, and graduates, we hope you will go forward from the mount and do the same. Candidates for degrees will now be presented. Following the presentation of all candidates, Dr. H. James Williams, president, will confer the degrees. Will the audience please withhold applause until all candidates are presented. This will allow for all graduate names to be heard and recognized. Our readers for today are Dr. Richard Simon, Assistant Professor, Department of Social Work and Sociology, Dr. Tracy McDonough, Professor and Chair, Department of Psychology, Dr. Jim Bodel, Professor, Department of Psychology, and Dr. Mark Fisher, Professor, Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Sorry, what? I'll read them from down there. I'm sorry. Mr. President, I have the honor to present the following candidates for Bachelor of Arts degrees. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, please come forward. Maria Sharon Adams.
Kylie Arvin. Nuvia Benales Lagana. Madeline Beasley, cum laude. Mackenzie Becker. Brianna Kathleen Bender, cum laude. Jefferson Napoleon Frederick Bishop, cum laude. Brooklyn D. Bruner, summa cum laude. Morgan Emily Butts. Destiny N. Chambers. Hannah Elizabeth Cox. Evan Michael Krim. Emily Marie Etrus, summa cum laude. Olivia Maria Falici, cum laude. Emily Ann Fiora. Sierra Sky Frank, cum laude. Kaylee Rose Freedy, summa cum laude. Brittany Mercedes Gordon. Elizabeth Mary Gro, magna cum laude. Mackenzie Joe Harbin, magna cum laude. Abigail Ann Heap. Magna cum laude. Alfonso Bernard Huckleberry II. Latrice Mondell Hunter Miles. Lee Teresa Youngkins, magna cum laude. Christina 
M key, cum laude. Travis Ray Canning the second, cum laude. Lania, Michelle, Maddie. Sarah Elizabeth Murray, summa cum laude. Brittany Michelle Perkins. Chloe Rose Ramsey, cum laude. Abigail Danielle Royce. Samantha Lynn Ryan. Kyrie L. Smith. Julie Ann Sucher, summa cum laude. Zakaya Thornton, cum laude. Sierra Nicole Townsend. Sierra Grace Tucker, summa cum laude. Logan Chase Wagner. Jared E. Walpole, cum laude. Ethan Thomas Williams, summa cum laude. Joel Christopher Williams, magna cum laude. Ryan Alexandria Williams, cum laude. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts, please come forward. Megan Bridgeford. Ruth Marie Dadaski. Yeah. 
Ethan Charles Huffman. Kayla Page Jerosak, magna cum laude. Logan Michael Runyon, cum laude. Aaron J. Sarvak. Corinne Elise Thomas. Mr. President, I have the honor to present the following candidates for Bachelor of Science degrees. Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science, please come forward. Shayla Michelle Allen. Emily Elizabeth Anderson. Colin Monroe Asher. Brandon Eugene Barber Jr. Summa Cum Laude. William Montana Barger. Bailey Catherine Bartley. Cornell Beecham, Jr. Nathaniel R. Bird. Lauren E. Bolin, summa cum laude. Kara Elizabeth Bradley, summa cum laude. Matthew Thomas Brandkamp, summa cum laude. Jacob Scott Brashear, magna cum laude. Isabel G. Brown. Nicholas Scott Brunsman, summa cum laude. Michaela 
Faith Chambers. Nathaniel William Chambers. John William Sissel, summa cum laude. Tora Christine Coleman, magna cum laude. Morgan Charlotte Cunningham, magna cum laude. Carly Maureen Dalton. Melissa Ann Dick. Devin Frank Donoworth. Justin Ray Drayling. Sarah Michelle Ebinger. Alexis Catherine Evangelou, magna cum laude. Abby Elizabeth Bellinger. Kaylee Brooke Ferguson, magna cum laude. Eric Joel Famacon. Molly Violet Goins. Brody Michael Gray, magna cum laude. Kelsey Sarah Jessica Gregory. Gustavo Eduardo Gutierrez, Jr. Kino Leroy Hammerstrom, cum laude. Jonathan Germain Hayes, Jr. Ashley M. Herman. Cecilia Francis Horn. Alexandra Rose Houston. Ashley Marie 
Isford. Brooklyn Nicole Johnson. Keyshawn Avery Lowry. Mr. President, I too have the honor to present the following candidates for Bachelor of Science degrees. Nathaniel M. Martz. <laughs> Margaret V. McMullen. Ryan Edward Medellin. Brooke Elizabeth Meyer, magna cum laude. Cole Thomas Maricol. Hannah Marie Morgan, magna cum laude. Allison T. Minch, magna cum laude. Mackenzie Rose Munson. Andrew W. Murphy, summa cum laude. Elizabeth Ann Cecilia Murray, summa cum laude. Joshua Manuel Nash. Katrina Marie Nason. Trevor Gerald O'Brien. Caitlin Elizabeth Osman, summa cum laude. Carter L. Owen. Mason Carter Owens. Renee Elizabeth Pavidic. Chip Jack Parker. Nicholas Edward Phelps. Congratulations. Michael Stephen Radcliffe, magna cum laude. Noah Robert Rebenack. Samuel Douglas Robbins. Whoa, 
Mackenzie Nicole Roth, summa cum laude. Chase Jordan Samples. Zoe Bryn Sanford, magna cum laude. Hunter Schoengarten. Sierra Dene Sexton. Grace Ann Renee Smith. Mary Sophia Spaeth. Magna cum laude. Devin J. Steinreide. Adelaide Michelle Taylor, cum laude. Emma Corinne Taylor. Yeah. Amber Marie Thomas. David Ventura Diaz. Matthew Hunter Weisgerber, cum laude. Mary Lorraine White. Evan Thomas Weehy. Thomas Richard Williams. Timothy Donald Zhang, magna cum laude. Mr. President, I too have the honor to present the following candidates for Bachelor of Science in Nursing degrees. Brooke Ann Oslogi, summa cum laude. Samantha Marie Bohan. Cum laude. Buckner. Buckner. Kaylin Elizabeth Buckner. Sydney Nicole Cosgrove, Cum laude. Madison Elise Kreider. Emma Rose Serwinski. (laughs) 
Jacob Edward DeWald. Noeli Dindan Kabor. Jillian Celeste Donahue. Claire M. Fleming. Ashley Nicole Glass. Christopher Noah Hammond. Madison Emily Hart, cum laude. Kendra E. Hunter. Casey Ann Jager, magna cum laude. Kirsten L. Jeffries. Nathan Benjamin Lacey. Kelly Michelle Melvin, Mag magna cum laude. Emily Metzner, summa cum laude. Megan Elizabeth Meyer. Summa cum laude. Three in a row. Three in a row. Lauren Elizabeth Middendorf. Summa cum laude. Kennedy Rain Miller. Madeline Teresa Otten, magna cum laude. Journey K. Rushing. Lauren Elizabeth Shuddy, magna cum laude. Anna Louise Square John. <laughs> Kelly Ann Smith, magna cum laude. Abigail E. Strack. Hannah Elizabeth Taylor, magna cum laude. Lauren Ann Taylor, summa cum laude. Tyler D. Voris.
Elizabeth Grace Wade. Ashley Nicole Blair Wilson. Ajua Sawaya Sawai Yaboa. Okay. Ajua Sawai Yaboa. Yes. Yes. Will the graduates now stand, please? By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and the State of Ohio, I confer on you the degree on which you have been nominated and welcome you into the ranks of the Mount alumni. Graduates, you may move your tassel from right to left. Please be seated. Many of our students receive recognition for outstanding accomplishments, and I am pleased to recognize students who have received awards for outstanding leadership and service. Students receiving excellence in leadership awards were formerly recognized at the Honors Convocation during the celebration of teaching and learning that took place on April 13th. I ask that the students receiving this honor stand at their seats and remain standing until all names are read to be recognized. Tor Coleman, Emily Etris, Brody Gray, Mackenzie Harbin, Madison Hart, Christina Key, and Timothy Zhang. Please join me in applause to congratulate them. Thank you, you may be seated. The Jane Cooney Armstrong Award is presented annually to a senior student who has shown consistent diligence in overcoming obstacles and difficulties in pursuit of higher education. The university is proud to award this honor to Sierra Nicole Townsend. Today, today, Sierra received, today re Sierra received a Bachelor of Arts in Social Work. Sierra, please come forward to receive your award.
The Sister Maria Corona Leadership Award is given to a student who has demonstrated consistent, outstanding leadership in campus and or community activities. The university is proud to award this honor to Tora Christine Coleman. Today, Tora received Today, Tora received a degree of Bachelor of Science in Criminology. Tora, please come forward to receive your award. I am also pleased to recognize students who have received awards for outstanding achievement in their academic programs. These awards have been presented during department ceremonies. Students' names appear in your commencement program. The Mount St. Joseph University Distinguished Student Award is presented to a student who has demonstrated superior academic performance as well as active participation in community service consistent with the Catholic mission of the university. I am honored to present the Mount St. Joseph University Distinguished Student Award to Sierra Grace Tucker. Today, Sierra received her Bachelor of Arts degree in Communication and New Media Studies, Computer Science. It is my pleasure to present Sierra Grace Tucker as our distinguished student speaker. Thank you so much. I would like to begin by thanking President Williams, the Distinguished Student Selection Committee, and all of my many mentors here at Mount St. Joseph University who have given me the opportunity to speak at graduation today and have one more thing in common with Taylor Swift. In truth, I could spend the entirety of this speech thanking those who have helped me, helped me on this incredible journey. And I'm sure all of my fellow graduates could do the same. So I'll keep this part brief. I would like to take a special moment, however, to thank the parents in the room, particularly my parents, Amy and Matt Tucker. I am forever and immeasurably grateful to you both for the sacrifices you have made to get me to where I am today. I walk across this stage for you and because of you and the millions of tiny and hidden sacrifices you have made to get me here. You have taught me the value of education and filled my life with laughter and encouragement. I am so proud to be a testament of your hard work and love. Thank you both so much. I love you. For those of you in the room who may not know me, my name is Sierra, and I am proud to graduate today and be a representative of the class of 2023, all of whom have helped make the Mount a home. The atmosphere of this university is one that exudes love, support, and commitment to its mission. We have all worked to do our part to, in creating this atmosphere and making the Mount the amazing, special, and supportive place we all know it to be. Our class and this school would not be what it is today without each of you. And I would like to thank all of my fellow graduates for being here and making my college journey unforgettable. I have, in truth, spent countless hours looking at quotes and trying to think of a theme for this speech until I realized that what I really wanted to say was all around me. It's in campus ride emails, brochures, billboards, and it's this idea that we are called to risk a caring response. Our time at Mount St. Joseph has trained us to do just that, to go out into the world and to use what we have learned to make an impact in an effective, meaningful, and caring way. Our majors and experiences are a testament to just that. The core classes we have taken have instilled in us the desire to serve our community, and our majors have provided the tools required to be effective and passionate agents for change. The Mount has extended both knowledge and compassion in equal measure while providing the insights required to effectively merge them. 
compassion without rigorous academics, amidst the tools required to promote social progress, while academics without compassion provide knowledge but fail to grow our hearts in ways required to successfully carry out God's mission for us to love and assist others. We are so fortunate to be here today, graduating full of both knowledge and compassion, ready to enter the world and utilize both to their fullest extent. To dare to risk a caring response is no small task. It's opening ourselves up to vulnerability. What if we're wrong? What if we can't make a difference? But in the face of that, knowing that it's our duty to ourselves and to others to persist on a righteous path. And that has been modeled by those around us every day here at MSJ. The faculty and staff have shown us what it means to dare to risk a caring response. They leave their homes each day and come here to serve as a home and as guardians to each of us. They go above and beyond what is required because they care about us and know the good this university can do. For me, daring to risk a caring response has been especially modeled by my advisor, Dr. Lisa Cruz, and our Vice President for Institutional Advancement, Cindy Pavoska. Both of these women have served as mentors for me in my journey, and I would not be standing here today without them. Lisa has always welcomed me and my 1,000 questions into her office with a smile, willing to talk through my ideas and make my dream of graduating a full year earlier reality. And she has done so with extreme care and patience, for which I will be eternally grateful. Sydney has been a guide, a friend, and a second mom to me here on campus. And I would like to take a moment to thank you for teaching me to advocate for myself and becoming invested in not only me, but everyone here today. Sydney is an amazing person and a perfect representative of the mission of Mount St. Joseph, and I am so proud to know her. These are just two of many people who have shaped me here. Two women who dare to risk a caring response because it is in their nature to do so and to inspire us to do the same. I'm sure we all have special people like that here. Mount St. Joseph is full of them. They are what makes this school such an amazing place. So to everyone who has helped support the class of 2023 in small and large ways, thank you. Mount St. Joseph University has given us more than a degree. It has given us a home and a foundation upon which we can build better futures for our families and communities. We have gained confidence, connection, and so much more over our time here, and I am certain that by daring to risk a caring response, we will do our alma mater proud. Taylor Swift once said, life isn't about how to survive the storm, it's about how to dance in the rain. So today, I ask each of you to dance. We are called to care without hesitation and to be a light to those around us, even in the darkest of circumstances. We have seen adversity and struggle and risen above over our time here and are called to con continue to do so. But not only are we called, we are ready. We are ready to do more than survive. We can thrive, succeed, and bring others with us because that is what it means to dare to risk a caring response. And if you are graduating today, that's what you're now qualified to do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sierra. It is my pleasure to invite President H. James Williams back to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Curry, and thank all of you. Good afternoon. On behalf of the students, the faculty, the staff, the alumni, and the Board of Trustees, and in honor of our foundresses, the Sisters of Charity of Cincinnati, I want to add my welcome to this 111th commencement ceremony. We're very pleased that you could come and join us as we celebrate excellence and achievement. Of course, I must begin by recognizing members of the Sisters of Charity of Cincinnati. There are wonderful foundresses who have encouraged us and their values continue to sustain and inspire us now for 103 years. If there are sisters in the room, please stand so we can recognize you. Please, Sister Anna. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
It's a real pleasure to serve Mount St. Joseph University in honoring the Sisters of Charity. I also want to recognize and acknowledge my lovely wife and your First Lady, Carol Campbell Williams. Thanks, Carol, for all you do for the Mount. And in anticipation of tomorrow, Mother's Day, I'd like to take this moment to ask all mothers to stand so that we may recognize you. Please. Bravo. Bravo. thank our two speakers for their wonderful, insightful, inspiring comments. I know that we're all better for having had them share with us so deep, such deep commitments. So thanks to our speakers. Yes. And now for the 2023 spring semester graduates, a charge, if you will. First, I extend special thanks to all who have joined us for this commencement celebration. While COVID-19 disrupted much of the last couple of years for many of these outstanding young men and women, I commend them for persevering and exerting the extra effort and energies necessary to succeed and achieve. I commend them not just for conquering COVID, but for conquering the many other obstacles that raised their heads during the time they spent educating themselves. Congratulations, graduates. You overcame them all. It may also be worth noting to yourselves and for yourselves what President Lincoln once said. There are no accidents, for every effect must have its cause past is the cause of the present, and the present will be the cause of the future. You should take heart in that. You're not here by serendipity or happenstance. You're here today being recognized as graduates of Mount St. Joseph University because of the work that you have put in, because of the times you stayed up late at night to get things done and the times you got up early in the morning to make things happen, or the times you went to classes when you didn't feel so well, and the time you took that extra bit of energy and effort to help your classmates, to go and look up the word. I mean, those are the kinds of efforts and energies you exerted to place yourself where you are. The past is the cause of the present. And here you stand now ready to propel yourselves into the future, because the present will be the cause of the future. We applaud your success in educating yourselves well, and more important, cementing your understanding of the value of education, which positions you so very well for lifelong learning. The choices we make dictate the lives that we live. For some of you, a college education is the price of admission to the profession you've chosen. Great, that's good for you. For others of you, you made the choice to educate yourselves just because you understand the imperative of continuous improvement and you're striving to be the very best you can be in your chosen profession and in your lives. You know that higher education opens doors, provides options, and enhances appreciation for so much of God's great beauty. Indeed, you've earned a future full of options and choices that you can make. And while the future will provide challenges, I assure you, the rewards you are positioned to achieve will be great and even profound. You will excel. You need only believe in Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you. not to harm you. 
plans to give you hope and the future. Hope and a future indeed, graduates. You are future world leaders, citizens of the world. Go boldly and capitalize on the preparedness and optimism that have become the hallmarks of amount education. Class of 2023, remember, your amount of education is a promise. It's a promise for you as to who you are and who you can be. It's a promise of what you can achieve. It's a promise to educate scholars and leaders one by one. You must now bring that promise to fruition in all you do. You are scholars and leaders. Go now and be extraordinary. And remember, Simplicity, humility, and charity. Care for all creation. Dare to risk a caring response. Be all in and embrace change. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to introduce Garrett Bascom, class of 2017 from the Alumni Association. Since leaving the Mount, his degree in communication and new media studies, Garrett attended law school at Indiana University and worked full time in the Indiana Attorney General's office, where he held various roles, including special assistant to the Chief Deputy Attorney General and then Deputy Attorney General. He then left state government to come home and work as deputy prosecutor for Dearborn County. In 2023, Garrett started Bascom Law LLC to better serve the citizens of Southeast Indiana. Please join me in welcoming Garrett Bascom. It's my honor to officially welcome you to the alumni. Today is one of the most important new beginnings of your life. And I'm sure there are folks here at all different stages. There are those of you that have known what you've wanted to do since elementary school. There are some of you that may have discovered your passion right here at Mount St. Joe. And I'm sure that there are some of you that are still working that out. But no matter where you find yourself today, just know that you're not alone. When I graduated in 2017 from here and 2020 from IU McKinney, I had a full-time position with the Indiana Attorney General. I thought I'd work there or in some sort of government field like that forever. Fast forward to today and I started my own law firm on January 1st of this year. I never would have seen that coming at any of those times. Changes are going to happen. In my experience, it's actually a rare person who sits in your seat and looks back and is exactly where they predicted in 15, 10, even five years down the road. But the most important thing is that you recognize opportunity and keep moving forward. Now as you graduate, I have three challenges for you. The first is to seize the opportunities that you have early in your career. I've had a painting in every office that I've had that my stepmother did for me that reminds me of this with the phrase carpe diem, seize the day. You're going to get opportunities early in your career that will set you on the course for your life. Take advantage of those opportunities and say yes early and often in your career. When you're just starting, opportunity abounds. It is at that time that people will be most willing to give you advice and mentor you. Those early connections are often invaluable, and learning from those that have been in your field will really help you confirm your choice or even let you know it's not too late to take another opportunity. If you take this time early to say yes, you will build your reputation as a go-getter so that when that chance comes up, you're first in line. You only get one chance to make a first impression, and those impressions can last a lifetime. I've been blessed to have great mentors in my life who have, who have and continue to give me opportunities, and I can tell you I wouldn't be here today without all of them. Now, the second challenge is to live according to an old Greek proverb that I discovered during my time here at MSJ. It reads, 
Society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. Imagine if we all did things with an eye towards the greater good and having a positive impact for those that will come after us. You are fortunate and you're graduating with a leg up and a big responsibility as a graduate from Mount St. Joseph. This university started with a mission and it continues to live out that mission to this day and it imparts that on all of us during our time here. Get involved in your community. Get involved with your professional organizations and make those connections and alliances early. Live out the old Teddy Roosevelt speech and be that man in the arena. And this leads into the third challenge, which is to light the way. Show the world what it means to be a graduate of Mount St. Joseph. Pay it forward to your local community and pay it forward to this community and future generations of Mount students. I know that I was fortunate to work with Mount alumni when I was enrolled here, and those, con those connections continue to influence me. And when I was in Indianapolis, I was notorious for sharing the story of the Mount, and you would be surprised of the reach of this university. I'm sure that each of you have your own unique Mount story. Tell that story. Share your experience you had here. When you get time, come back. Help the next you who is going through school. Help this university thrive for the next generation. So as you go forward today, remember, carpe diem, plant your tree, and light the way for the next generation. Thank you, and good luck. Thank you, Garrett. It's so nice to have you back on campus. While a student, Garrett was leader in the Student Government Association, serving as both president and treasurer, and he served on various university-wide committees. I still often refer to Indiana as the great state of Indiana because Garrett taught me this, and that is how I should say it. It's great to have you here, and we look forward to see what you bring back to the Mount with the Alumni Association, so thank you. In fact, it's great to have so many of you here with us today, gesturing here to the audience, knowing that there are many alumni here with us. Part of what makes graduation so special is the chance to celebrate with your friends and family. In a few moments, you're going to walk out of these doors as alumni of Mount St. Joseph University and get to do just that. But for one of our graduates here today, a very special person can't be here with them. And it's not just because this person had other plans or didn't feel like making the trip to campus. No, for one of our graduates, their last year of college was thrown off when their husband learned that they were getting deployed. Since he can't be here with us today, this young man, an MSJ alumnus in his own right, recorded this message to have us play here today. Please turn your attention to the screens. Hello, my name is Private First Class Zach Bell with the United States Army. I wish I could be there with you all today, especially my beautiful wife, Elena. 1,724 days ago, her and I met on our very first day of college at the Mount. I wish I could be there with you all today. However, I have been deployed since September to the Middle East. Elena, I am so proud of you and I wish I could be there and your hard work has never gone unnoticed. Only a few short months until I'm home. I miss you, I love you. You guys should all be proud of yourselves. Congratulations. Go Lions. And I would like to say thank you, Zach, for your service to our country and for your message. Elena, Maddie, Bell, where are you? Please stand. Get a round of applause.
You and Zach are lucky to have each other, and we're so glad that you met right here at the Mount. So thank you. Best wishes. I'd also like to thank our entire marketing department and Peak Productions for making this all work as part of this. So big thumbs up, you guys. One of the great traditions at the Mount is the recessional that takes place after each commencement ceremony, when the graduates exit the arena and walk through a receiving line of our faculty and staff offering congratulations. This congratulatory line of faculty exits the rear of the gym, and I hope you enjoy their heartfelt joy celebrating with each of you today. Following the benediction, family guests must remain in your places until the stage party, faculty, and then the graduates have completely left the gym under the direction of our wonderful faculty marshals, Dr. Jennifer Withrow and Dr. Carrie Getz. Family and friends may then exit through the main Harrington doors where you entered and meet your graduates on the driveway to take photos in the quad or in front of the mountain lion sculpture in front of the Centennial Fieldhouse. We ask for your cooperation to make this a smooth process. We also have brand new MSJ letters that you may have seen close to the parking structure and the stairs to the football field. So if you want to take some photos over there, that's a good new spot. Thank you very much for your cooperation in this regard. Um, the graduates, please stay safe, be well, enjoy your special day of celebrations. Blessings as you begin this new chapter as a Mount alum. We're so happy to be able to host the ceremony and I thank all of the graduation committee members, administration, registrar, campus police, buildings and grounds, emergency response, and our faculty and staff and volunteers who work to make this program happen today. Let's hear it for them. I would like to invite now Sister Annette Muckerhide from our Board of Trustees to provide our benediction. Once again, let's take a moment of quiet and be grateful. Be grateful for everyone who has made this day possible, especially our graduates, their parents, and their significant others and anyone in their lives. So we ask God, the source of life, to bless our graduates today with joy and enthusiasm as they begin new chapters in their lives and carry the spirit and values of Mount St. Joseph with them. May God, the God of mercy and kindness, bless our graduates with a deep sense of compassion, courage, as they fulfill their new roles in society. May God, the source of all love, bless these graduates with loving companions friends to support them through life and enable them to be sources of love in the world. May God, the source of wisdom and understanding, bless our administrators, faculty, with the wisdom and knowledge they need to continue to carry out and celebrate the mission of the Mount. May God, who calls each of us to service with the gifts and talents that we need to bless the university staff who serve with the strength and courage they need to serve the community. May God, who gifts us with family and friends to support us throughout our lives, bless the families and friends of our graduates with peace and joy as we shower them with our gratitude. May God bless us all.
be in us and for us a force of love, wisdom, compassion, and service to our world. And all of this we pray with joyful and grateful hearts. Amen. <laughs>